Hello, Ansa. Not so nice to meet you. Hey, Mark. Thank you so much. Same here. So excited. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Wow. Yeah, I'm really excited to, uh, to hear about your story. I was really inspired uh, when I read about everything you've accomplished. It's, uh, it's really incredible. And um, I mean, I, I would love, you know, for whatever you're comfortable sharing, maybe just a little bit about your story. I think it's fascinating. And I'm, I'm just, again, super inspired by what you've accomplished. Thank you. Uh, this means really a lot to me. Uh, and I would love to share uh, a little bit about this, uh, about my journey. Uh, I am from Pakistan originally. I was a fashion and textile designer over there. Uh, if I say very accomplished, that wouldn't be a lie. Uh, I was working on a very high level um, with the top, uh, you know, the political elite, uh, I would say. And then, uh, like everyone else, I had my own vulnerabilities as well. And uh, there are people who, you know, they, they look for those vulnerabilities everywhere and they want to exploit that. Um, that happened to me as well. Um, as a result, I found myself here in New York. Um, and it was, it was a very tough uh, thing for me to decide uh, what my next steps would be or how what my future would look like because um it was not just me in danger it was my family as well i was separated from my son for many years um and then there was a moment when i decided you know to take a step i decided to take the step for myself and my my son as well um and it was only possible because i could see the hope on the other end um, and I, I took that step of, I'm sorry, I cannot go like much deeper into this, but, um, it's basically, I survived or I, you know, came out of this abusive relationship in 2016, uh, with the help of many wonderful organizations in New York city, I had, um, all my, legal work done, I found myself in a safe house among other survivors. You know, being among other survivors, uh, that really uh, pushed me or gave me the courage uh, to do something bigger than myself, uh, actually. So that, that's kind of, you know, a little bit the background, how my journey as a survivor and as the entrepreneur um, in the nonprofit and for-profit world started. Uh, I was still separated from my son, trying to, you know, bring him over. Uh, you know, my, my exploiter or my perpetrator, uh, he is a very, very powerful person, uh, very connected um, in the political realm over here. So it was super difficult uh, to do everything, but the hope for a better life for myself and all these survivors around me, it really gave me the courage to take the step and do the things that I started to started to do. Uh, I started my journey with um, advocacy because I saw gaps by working with uh, multiple you know, nonprofit organizations uh, serving on their advisory boards. Um, I realized there is a gap, although all these one organizations, they are doing such wonderful job, uh, but the healing journey and then uh, the empowerment, um, that is uh, my goal. That was my goal from the beginning. So uh, as a result of that mission and aspiration, I started uh, Empowerment Square. Um, the logo is uh, behind me. So, uh, and my son designed that logo. <laughs> I would love to mm -hmm. give credit to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, based on that mission and um, uh, inspiration, I started this uh, organization, uh, putting together the pieces that I really felt are um, necessary, like very, very necessary. And not many organizations are able to do this because of their own, uh, you know, reasons. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying that, you know, they're not doing this purposely, but um, as a result of that, I compiled um, all these pieces and I set up the programs and uh, the organization is working right now. We are serving uh, 30 uh, plus 
uh, women survivors of human trafficking at the moment. Uh, so that's a little bit about my empowerment sphere and my journey behind this. But uh, in a nutshell, uh, you know, uh, it is all about empowerment, empowerment of um, women. And, and, and I especially want to speak to this because in the essence of celebration of Women's Day, I think this message is really important to go out, uh, not just for the survivors, but every woman out there listening to us that you have that spark inside of you, which is sometimes, you know, uh, you put it aside because of the fears or what you have been told uh, by the society. Uh, that spark needs to, to be, um, you know, brought up and uh, really uh, think about, you know, everything that you have accomplished in your life. Uh, so you still have the courage, please take the stand, not just for yourself, but for, for the next generations, uh, for every woman around you. Um, so yeah, that, that would be like my main message. Like, please stand up, educate yourself and educate, I mean, you know, educate about, about the topic. Uh, because these things are uh, still happening. It, it is happening, you know, right under our nose. I was reading this article the other day about the uh, Sarah Lawrence, uh, what happened at the Sarah Lawrence College. I'm not sure if you, you know, if you read about that, but uh, see, there are people who are, you know, very wealthy people. Nobody can even, you know, fathom the fact that these people could be involved in, in this these things and these children, they come from very privileged families, right? The fact that uh, I I used to uh, think and feel bad about myself, even talking about uh, my story, that people would think, oh my gosh, she is an educated woman. She had her own business and a, and a very professional life, accomplished life back in Pakistan. How could she uh, be a victim of human trafficking, right? And that kept me for a very long, uh, you know, from talking about my story or sharing it with others. But then I realized like, unless I, I you know, share my story, others would be doing the same. They would be enduring all that abuse and uh, all that, you know, wrongdoing that others are uh, doing with them just by thinking the same thought. So that is basically what helped me, you know, uh, to come to, to the front and uh, I have been speaking at the United Nations and everywhere because I really want to encourage the, you know, the women uh, specifically that please uh, recognize your power and speak up if, if there is anything that you see. Well, that's, uh, that's really, really inspiring. Anta. I mean, I, I applaud you for, for taking the leap and, and being so vocal and, and helping you know, so many people. Um, what, what, how long is the class and, and what gap do you think you're filling uh, relative to what exists out there? As a first step, even when I was in the, in the safe house myself, I used to advocate so heavily on the fact that please do something where they can learn the language to express themselves. So this is the first step that we do. And the way we do it, uh, we pair each mentee, we call them our clients, you know, they are called mentee, and we pair them with individual dedicated native English speaking mentor. These mentor and mentee, like the peer, they work over a period of six months uh, via Zoom. Uh, they connect every week. Uh, they do their practice. They learn about uh, the culture. They uh, develop their own uh, stories and, you know, gaining the confidence in themselves. That is a huge piece that we were very focused on. Because if you have the confidence and even if you speak little English, still you can very confidently, you know, portray uh, the message uh, and advocate for yourself. And um, you're above basically the risk of being uh, abused ever again in your life, right? So this is the first step that we do. And uh, we have wonderful, wonderful mentors and uh, you can read more about our mentors as well. It's all, all on, on our website. And how do they find out about your program and, and how do you accept, how do you decide who to accept in? How does that work? Great and where question. do you get fund, and, and how much funding like have you gotten or do you need? That's cool, thank you. So we partner with uh, other organizations in the city, you know, like Sanctuary for Families, Restore, Life Aid Network. Um, there are many more. So I, and, and since I have worked with them as a client, you know, uh, we had this relationship and now we are collaborating on many levels, not just, 
you know, referring them referring their clients to to our programs, but on many many other levels as well. So that's how we get our clients. Um, yeah, but in the, in the future, the plans are that we will be working with the, the law enforcement uh, agency so they can send their clients directly to us. Uh, the only uh, hindrance would be that we don't have a space, you know, to uh, make those clients stay because that's also, you know, they don't have any, any place to live. Uh, but if that would be possible, which is our ultimate goal to have our safe houses for these women to uh, have their, uh, you know, healing journey while they learn all these skills and get themselves, um, you know, where they can truly be independent. Wow. Okay. No, that's how, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I've, you know, you know, just started to learn about, about the, everything that's happening. And I think that you're, you know, onto something that it, you can't let people, um, just leave, you know, without having learned a skill or, you know, and I use the word empowerment. I think empowerment is, yeah. is, is right on, you know, people have to feel empowered to, that they have skills to make a living and feel proud of what they're doing on a day to day basis. That's what got me thinking about, you know, can you, can you teach people to be an entrepreneur? It sounds like that's yeah. sort of what you're doing. Um, Absolutely. And Absolutely. You know, if you had more capital, what would you do? Like what, and first of all, how do you how do you get capitalized? And yeah, right now we are relying on individual fundings. We are uh, applying to um, organizational institutional support. Of, you know, government, non-government, um, every every uh, kind of uh, support. So that's like uh, we are planning and developing um, our strategies and everything. But yeah that that's the main source basically every source is we are pursuing every source what would you want to do in terms of like to take it to the next level i'm sure you've thought about that absolutely absolutely we have big big plans actually and over the years we have seen um that not every survivor uh, is uh, able to get to a job or ideal job where they can support themselves and their family and truly become independent, you know, financially. I, I see that tendency of uh, survivors, uh, you know, the cultures that they come from, every one of them has this entrepreneurial spirit in them because you, you see in our countries, the job infrastructure is not the best, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, there are only either government jobs where you have to, you know, it, I, I don't even wanna go into that. So every one of them mostly has that entrepreneurial uh, spirit. Uh, so that's why I am building into that. And um, in order to prepare them for that entrepreneurial journey, we have our financial uh, education program, which is starting uh, this month. Um, we have partnered with uh, organizations like VNYC and uh, Bach and others, and their instructors would be teaching these courses. Um, the, that is like financial independent, uh, sorry, financial uh, education program, and then job and skill training um, program. That's like a huge one uh, where they can be trained. They can, they, you know, we help them get uh, internships. So we do want to serve more people. Uh, we have 20 people on the waiting list. Uh, and we have these people throughout our, our cohort. We could not really manage, but with more capital, because we, we, really don't have any staff member at this point. You know, everyone is a volunteer, we are all volunteers. So we try uh, to do our best um, and you know, we, would, we would love to serve more clients. We would love to uh, you know, uh, take it to the next level as in uh, having our own safe house, right? Where they can stay and continue their healing journey at the same time, um, get uh, the skills to, to be uh, financially independent and then you know fly on their own wings basically wow that, that sounds like a great plan i'd love to uh get together and see how i might be able to help on the entrepreneurial side also i'd like to make a, a donation too so um oh, i want to yeah support you and I, I really believe in what you're doing and i'm inspired by your story and i think you, you have the potential to do so much good um in this world and i want to try to be helpful if i can um, I, I, I have some ideas um, on the entrepreneurship side on, on some ways to get people involved um, as, as an entrepreneur. That could be interesting, but uh, it's probably too, too much to get into on this call. But <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. I'm just more than excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks so much. Do you have, yeah. do you have any questions for me? Um, and we can get together in person, but if you had any questions that you know you wanted me to answer now. Absolutely. Uh, tons of questions, actually. You know, I don't know if you can answer all those questions on this call. Um, as you know, I'm, uh, I'm starting on this uh, Village Square, you know, e-commerce shopping platform. Um, I would love to know, okay, what the, the next phase would be, or even how can I get the funding? Uh, or let's say uh, the prize is $200,000. I'm very uh, hopeful that I, I would get that. But that's to me it's like nothing as compared to you know what this platform uh, will look like because we are, our plans are to have vendor portal uh, to support our vendors uh, with the um, with the expertise like packaging and marketing and how to make their brand really look good and sell uh, on the national and even international level um, all, all those pieces so maybe the main question would be how to uh, already plan uh, for the next phase of funding, because I want to make sure that we don't we, we don't have to stop the work and then you know look for funding. I want to be prepared in advance for that. Okay, and and the the website because it's easier to raise capital if it's for profit, meaning they're investors. It's easier if it's not for profit. I can still probably help you, but there's fewer investors that would be interested in that. Is it how is it structured? The website. So. Yeah, initially I thought about making it a nonprofit and linking it to Empowerment Square, but then I got the similar ideas or advice, uh, you know, maybe that it would be much harder to raise the capital for a nonprofit. So I have decided to make it into a for profit. And yeah, I think that I think that makes sense. The, yeah, and, and, and it's a great, you know, it does uh, have a social responsibility, social good component that's powerful that. But, but at the same time, there's a lot of investors out there that, you know, want that and the potential to make returns on their investment as well. So it, it offers a great opportunity for investors to get involved in something, you know, do good and also potentially make some returns. I, I, I can definitely help you. I could, I could use all the help from you. And uh, this would be the first time raising capital like this, um, especially uh, here in America. So, of course, I'm, I'm super thrilled and I... I feel like, you know, this is the perfect match. I, I could not have asked for a better, you know, uh, to have you as, as um, my mentor and, and to support me in this. And I, I genuinely mean that. No, I really, I believe in what you're doing. And like I said, I mean, it, it's truly inspirational, your whole story and uh, what you're doing and, and that you um, are putting the, the amount of time you are and effort into giving back. Um, no, I'm just, I'm really, really, inspired by it. So I want, I want to help and, and I want to come on the 22nd and, uh, and talk about a donation and how I can help on the, on the website and the pitch deck and all that stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so very much, Mark. Really appreciate that. Yeah, it was great meeting you too. <laughs> Absolutely. Same here. Same here. Thank you. All right. So in terms of support, uh, I, I really encourage everyone to educate themselves uh, about the issue of human trafficking. Uh, have these conversations with, the, with your kids. That's like the most important piece that I always tell everybody uh, in our advocacy sessions. Um, the second way the, uh, that you can support our work specifically is by going to our website, uh, empowermentsquare.org uh, without the D. Um, and uh, please uh, read all about our work, uh, how our mentors feel, how our mentees are, are doing and, uh, you know, really being empowered by the work that we are doing um, and help us, support us uh, even with a few dollars. It would mean a lot for us. So thank you very much.